Do you face problem while working with your data science project that you are not getting the desired results even after applying the right algorithm and the right parameters within the algorithm? Well, this is an everyday task or an everyday scenario of a data scientist that you are not getting the desired results even after applying the right algorithm. Well, in this video, I will show you a couple of data transformation techniques that you can apply to your algorithms before supplying the data to the algorithm and see whether this is making any difference. As part of any data science job, it is a duty of a data scientist to keep on experimenting with the data and with the algorithm until you get the desired or the accepted results. And these data transformation techniques, which I will be teaching you in this video, is part of that experiment because some algorithms take the, the uh, transform data uh, or accept the transform data in much better way than the normal or the original data. So these data transformation techniques that I will show you will going to help you to experiment with your data and get the desired results from your uh, from your project or from your data science project that you are having in hand. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So here we are for the project two. Project one is something which I uploaded it earlier. So that is present in the same notebook. I am keeping it in the same notebook so that uh, you don't have to request the access as well as uh, follow a new link altogether. And uh, for me also to maintain entire code in just one workbook well, is, is quite easy and similar is the case for you. So what I'll do is uh, uh, I will paste the link of this, of this uh, notebook into the uh, description and you can download it from there in case you want to use it for your reference as well as uh, the data set link. So if you already have the data set access, then you don't have to uh, request it again. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, importing the libraries because uh, we are starting with absolutely new kernel. So importing pandas as pd and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and percentage matplotlib in line just basic libraries for data access data manipulation data visualization and for printing the plots within the line itself or after the cell all right uh, first task is getting the data so to get the data i'll just go up very quickly copy this because this is what I want and uh, I will go down <coughs> come here paste it what we are saying is uh, for we are creating this object reading the file read.csv daily total female birth in California we want first column to be indexed which is dates and uh, we want to parse the date so that Python can know uh, once the data within this object that first column contains date so zero indicates the index number uh, or the column number which starts from zero zero indicate first column one indicate second column so indexing starts from zero within python if you are not aware so if we execute this the quick check like we did earlier oops f i do this mistake all the time but i hope you can leave it so this is the data that we got this is the first column index column this is the the number female birth in california every day so first january 1959 35 birth on second january 32 girl child born uh, on third 30 and on fourth and so on and so forth all right uh, one issue we saw earlier with this data dot if I say tail is having this line into your data set which is nothing but indicating that this is a file name and this is the year we have to remove this because this can create problems and to do that b i r t h equals to f underscore birth from 0 to 365 so if you see 
uh, this is a 365 uh, data 365 data set because it is starting from 1959 January 01 going until 1959 December 31st and this is the row and as you know the indexing start from zero so this is basically zero going up till this is 364 and this is 365 but in our index we are taking 0 to 365 why is that so that's maybe an interview question that uh, why you are picking up even the last row into the data set and uh, what it will do well as per python uh, documentation the last row or the last index number that you specify is exclusive it doesn't count and because of that it will not going to pick this particular row which is the 365 row because row is starting from 0 to 364 because it is a 365 data set and since it includes 0 it becomes 365 and this is 366 but index number is 365 so we need to remove that if I do that and now see the tail part we should not have this right so I hope now you are clear why we are doing it the last number is exclusive within the Python in this index it does not count it all right so now let's go ahead and do the data transformation to do the data transformation the very first technique that we have is normalization so normalization is basically useful in two cases one is I'll just put it so that you can refer it later as part of the notes of this uh, series one is uh, if your data is on different scales right for example uh, you are getting the data for the different heights of individuals probably let's say female in this case so what may happen is there are some people who may be capturing the height within the uh, centimeters there may be people who may be capturing it in the meters so if your data is on different scales it, it will be a different value altogether so you may want to bring every data point on the same scale another uh, another way or another reason why you would like to do that is there are some algorithms like uh, linear regression logistic regression and couple of more that basically works well when your data is normalized when we say normalized that means it is not having the high fluctuation that means high low points and high down points and it is normalized in a way that it it represents a proper consistent structure and when we do the normalization the data will always be within the range of 0 and 1 and you will see it how in couple of minutes well uh, because some algorithms work better when data is normalized third reason I would just as part of one I would say because you are data scientist and you have to keep on exploring with data transformation techniques all right i think that is sufficient enough reason to ex to normalize our data as part of the data transformation so the formula for normalization is so let's say normalization equals to x minus minimum divided by maximum minus minimum so this is our formula for normalization you can create even your own function but the the scikit-learn has the the method for doing the normalization without uh, you even creating any form so what it does is basically it picks up the value that you are giving so the data set value like 37 52 48 this is nothing but the x value but from this data set there will be one minimum value and one maximum value so for example f underscore birth dot min so minimum value is 23 that means 
at least or on a given on a particular given day 23 female birth child happened and that is the lowest on a given day within the period of 365 days similarly f underscore birth dot max so that indicates that you had 73 as the maximum number of female birth child happened on a given day within the period of uh, 1 January 1959 to 31st December 1959 so now you know x now you know min right max min and x all of these things you know so let's try to fit the 37 and see what output we get so that will be in this case in a bracket 37 minus minimum which is 23 divided by 73 minus 23 and if we execute this it will be 0.28 so your value 37 is transformed from 37 to 0.28 as i mentioned that it will always be within the range of 0 and 1 similarly we can take example of 55 and what happens is 55 minus 23 divided by 73 minus 23 and it is 0.64 right so as you can see the algorithm when it picks there is a large variation when it comes to 37 and 55 as it compares to 28 and 64 so all of your value within the within a one uh, good range which uh, which can remove a lot of ups and uh, you know highs and downs of uh, of the data set and will work may try to give you the better results so this is what it will going to happen in the back end when you will apply this algorithm so let's go ahead and see how we can apply this algorithm so from sk learn dot preprocessing import min max scalar i just press tab and it has given me the output so min max scalar works on uh, array of data so what do we need is basically create an array birth underscore arr and it is simple if you have followed my video yesterday it is uh, simply like f underscore birth birth dot values so if i say birth underscore arr this is how the the columns or the data looks like all right so now let's go ahead and specify scalar equals to min max scalar and we need to specify the feature range which indicate basically how many features you want to take into consideration when you are transforming it so in this case we only have zero and one just the date and the the number of arrays so we'll go ahead and execute this so now we will go ahead and fit it scalar dot fit values all right something else birth underscore arr is that what we have specified birth underscore arr and now we have the values within this object so to identify what uh, what are those values we can say scalar or, or maybe here itself scalar dot data min so it has identified what is the minimum value similarly data underscore max is this there is another one range 50 so even if you see data there are like a lot of different methods so the next method we will going to apply is the fit underscore transform and the not fit transform but the transform so scalar dot transform or maybe what i'll do is i'll just keep this it's just so that you can refer it earlier la later when you will see this so birth underscore normalize equals to scalar dot transform and the array so now the transformed value trans data transformation is completed 
the transform value are present inside the birth underscore normalize so if you want to see the value birth underscore normalize zero this is what the value is 0.24 for t 35 right and birth underscore normalize one right this and similarly if you want to print more you can mention a for loop for i in let's say five values five print birth underscore normalize i and execute this and you will get the first five values okay so this way you can print the transformed values now this data once it is uh, once we are done with the normalization it is ready to pick or ready to be inserted into the algorithm so algorithm we earlier mentioned was the arima algorithm so if i go up a little bit here yeah from statsmodel.tsa so this and this there are these two import statement that we need to do from the first model so stat models dot tsa dot arima model and then specify the arima model and before that it will be good to train and test the data so control a control c i will just copy and paste so that i don't have to create it so f birth over here and uh, what i need to do in this case is i need to mention the birth underscore normalize right because we want to take the normalized value execute this is how the system is so birth underscore train dot size birth underscore test dot size 330 plus 35 is 365 so we have entire data okay and now i will go ahead and from stats models dot tsa and i think it was the i am not wrong the arima model yeah just wanted to confirm that dot arima model import arima okay and then afterwards we need to put we need to uh, create a model first of all then birth underscore model equals to arima and when that within that you have birth underscore train comma order equals to if i'm not wrong this was to one to i can check yeah two one three so we i think two one three is something what we can take and then we can compare with the AIC value so in the last video I mentioned the lesser the value of AIC the better the model is so birth model underscore fit is the next command and then the AIC what we need so if you go down and execute this birth underscore model underscore fit equals to birth underscore model dot fit and birth right now i'll just ignore this warning birth underscore model dot fit dot aic so it has gone down a lot if you see it has gone into a negative minus 344 so earlier we had the aic if i go up it was 2230 but after doing the transformation of the value we got a new value which is in negative so we need to really see how the predictions are coming once we are applying this so this is also going in a complete different direction but we still need to uh, we need to see how the forecast is coming and to do the forecast i have already mentioned in the previous video this is how your value should be so i'll just copy this piece and come over here so birth underscore forecast is birth underscore model underscore fit so our object is same and uh, dot for a cost steps is 35 because you know the test size is 35 so we can identify the mean squared error in that case so we execute this 
and birth underscore correct cast is this and birth underscore test is this so you will see that uh, these values are very very consistent this is like 46.46.46 some variation after the uh, when the third decimal point, point start uh, and over here it is a uh, it is bit of a variation like you can find 0 0.2 0 0.4 so look, having a cursory look gives us the idea that uh, probably the normalization is not giving the good result but we can always do the uh, testing so import sklearn dot matrix from import mean squared error and uh, for numpy as np because i need to use the np.sqrt method to take a square root and uh, what i can do is mean squared error within that so birth underscore test comma birth underscore correct cast 0 0.02 and i will take sqrt of this np dot point one four so this is our error rate point zero point one four very less error as compared to uh, what we got it over here if I have it six point eight right but what we need to do is to calculate it properly we need to take both of these values into their proper actual values so what I'll do is birth underscore for a cast underscore reverse equals to birth underscore for a cast and the owing mean is the scalar with that it will not come the trans the inverse sc is scalar dot inverse underscore transform and uh, birth underscore for a cast right value well, error reshape your data either using minus one okay so reshaping of the data is required so to birth underscore for a cast underscore let's create a new object so that we are not changing the object itself so that will be birth underscore for a cast dot reshape so length of our birth for a cast value birth underscore for a cast and as per the order which is needed over here okay and i will just cut it for a moment so the values are reshaped and uh, birth underscore reverse i'll just correct that uh, just the spelling was incorrect so birth underscore for a cast underscore reshape i hope it should work now yeah it has worked now so birth underscore for a cast underscore reverse so these are the reverse value as you can see for the for a casted output right and uh, this is the similar technique we can apply on the test data so birth underscore test underscore reverse equals to um, birth so birth for a cast and here we need to take birth underscore test dot re reshape first we need to reshape reshape length of birth underscore test comma one keeping in the order which it needs birth underscore test underscore reverse equals to scalar dot reverse inverse transform and then the birth underscore test reshape and now i can take the mean squared error within that birth underscore test underscore sorry reverse 
plus underscore for a cost verse and that is that our error rate is 7.2 so that is what i just wanted to show you that you cannot compare this value to the value above because this this is the output after we did the transformation and this is the output or the previous output which i showed above that was somewhere around six point something if i go up um where is it 6.8 right and here it is 7.23 so definitely this transformation technique has not paid off and you will not go ahead and use it so this way you can see that uh, we can how we can basically you know do the entire transformation of the data using the data normalization technique and com then compare the result that whether this transformation technique is really paying off the result with within this algorithm which is arima or the time series forecasting or not another method that we can employ is the standardization standardization which is much more advanced uh, as compared to the normalization because what it takes is basically the mean and standard deviation uh, into the consideration and then uh, apply the uh, standardization on the data so the formula is somehow similar um, that is x minus mean divide by st which is standard deviation so what you need to know is basically the mean and the standard deviation so numpy has the features like np dot mean or np dot standard deviation i think that is present i just need to figure it out the right syntax like we did in the case of min and max but uh, sklearn has the standard metric for the standardization so standardization is much more robust uh, when it comes to standardizing the data as compared to the normalization and uh, normalization basically expect that you are doing everything within the range that means within the min and max however out of range if you are going or your data is going bit of an out of range like for example if you have a trending up or trending down data which will have the range always either going up or going down that means it will be with outside of the range of minima and maxima most of the time you can apply the standardization technique so i'll just go ahead and import the standardization package or the method from the sklearn from sk learn dot pre processing import standard scalar and before i execute or let's go ahead and execute it doesn't have an impact but uh, what i wanted to say is one of the assumption that it takes is that your data should be normally distributed or it should follow the gaussian distribution even though it doesn't follow you can still apply and check for the result but idea is that it follows and things like uh, natural data for example there is a data set temperatures data set or the heights data set you know things which fluctuates in a proper order that means with like a nature then you can apply those uh, this standard scalar on that it will work very good in that case so if you have data which is related to the nature follows the gaussian distribution this will work like a charm all right so let's go ahead and uh, apply this std underscore scalar is equals to standard scalar and here we don't need to specify any range or anything and std underscore scalar equals to standard scalar dot fit and i think that was birth underscore something um what was that birth array b-i-r-t-h birth a-r-r birth underscore a-r-r if we execute this so yeah no error no warning so we are good and now it would have fetched the scalar dot some parameters like mean because it needs mean to calculate it standard deviation should be there uh, da, 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 da. we have uh, mean we have std with standard deviation so it's going to follow this so if we say mean is this 
std underscore scalar dot here is this variance so that is 53 okay so let's go ahead and uh, try to apply it on the data std underscore birth standard birth data equals to std underscore scalar dot transform and then birth array so now if you see std underscore birth zero this is what your array value looks like std underscore birth this number five this is how your value look like and you can use a for loop like this like i mentioned earlier if i go ever back to that yeah for i range five print birth normalize similarly same method you will apply it over here to print the data but this is also how you can go ahead and access it so now uh, what i'll do is um, i will just create the standard underscore birth underscore train and standard underscore birth underscore test data and uh, that is zero to if i am not wrong that was 360 or oh, 330 okay 330 equals to 330 365 all right oops i need to specify birth underscore ar r sorry std standard underscore birth std underscore birth all right and we can have std underscore birth underscore arima equals to arima and uh, std underscore birth underscore train and then specify the order everything is same it's just this particular line this this line and this just the standard scalar has changed and just uh, with, with this you know it may get give us the better results or may not if if it does not follow the assumption which i for sure know that uh, our data does not follow any normal standard distribution it's a very high variance data so standard birth arima and the order that we have is if i'm not wrong two one three two one two um two one two okay let's see this so this i have already explained how you will identify in the previous video so if you have not seen i highly recommend that because repeating that will be something a lot of time because that itself is a one hour long video all right so now we have the the standard birth arima model executed on this and now we can do the forecast so std underscore birth underscore forecast no we need to fit it sorry about that birth underscore arima equals to standard underscore birth underscore arima dot fit and maybe we will we can just change this also to this so this is now fit and uh, we can see the aic value which is which is archaic information criteria and in this case it is 918 very very high so let's go ahead and see what is going on here std underscore birth underscore arima std underscore birth underscore forecast let's forecast the value std underscore birth underscore arima dot fit dot forecast steps is equals to 35 and we just want the first column so standard score birth underscore forecast is our value this bit of a variation but from when i look at this transform data and std underscore birth score test this is how the value looks like 1.22 0.54 0.27 so there is a bit of a variation and here it looks like 
much more consistent so i think that this this technique has also is not working well with the time series but uh, as you know we can always evaluate by inversing it and checking the mean standard error of mean so to do that we we can follow the same technique that we have done earlier so if you have seen this first we need to reshape right and then we can reverse the value of birth forecast okay so birth forecast reshape is something what we need so we will just come over here and this is basically standard birth forecast standard std underscore birth underscore forecast std underscore birth underscore forecast std underscore birth underscore forecast so now we have the reshape value so after that standard underscore birth underscore forecast underscore rev that means reverse is our scalar i think std underscore scalar that we gave std underscore scalar yeah std underscore scalar it has the method inverse transform where we can pass on birth underscore forecast reshape so now our this value is in proper order and we can do we already have birth underscore test if i am not wrong yeah but this is also uh not properly transformed so birth underscore test we need we can transform that as well uh, by doing the birth underscore test underscore rev equals to um, this is uh, std underscore scalar and standard scalar we need to pass so first we need to reshape first let's look at this is our data standard birth test right so over here first of all birth underscore test underscore reshape equals to same method this this particular one birth dot reshape len comma one you see it's pretty much the same method for reshaping it and then birth underscore test underscore inverse or rev reverse just to make it consistent std underscore scalar and within that we need to pass oh we need to dot inverse transform birth underscore test underscore reshape so now our value should be like this right and now we can specify the mean square error so np dot sqrt this to take the square root and uh, we need to specify the mean square error and within that this first of all the test the actual value which is uh, birth test reverse birth test rev and then birth underscore forecast reverse and we get the error of 7.23 so we have 7.23 here um, if we see 7.23 here almost same output if you see so this basically indicates that uh, uh, they, they both the techniques are not useful when it comes to the actual output which is 6.86 but the main thing which i wanted to show you is how you can go ahead and apply this because as you know this involves a lot of uh, 
data massaging, data transformation, then reshaping the data, inversing our data, all of these different techniques. And generally what happens is, this is something uh, you need to write just once by creating a function. So what you need to do is you just create one function, let's say one for standardizing the data, one for normalizing the data and pass on this entire algorithm that, uh, that we have just uh, seen and within just one second it will give you the output. So don't think that you have to write all of this entire code again and again. It's just that you need to see uh, how you can create uh, the function which basically do the main operations which we have done and give you the direct output which is over here 7.23. So there are like this normalization and standardization. There are many others like log standardization and couple of more, which I will show share with you in the uh, next uh, couple of project videos. But uh, this is this is what I had in this video for you for normalization standardization. How you can do that? So I will upload all of this on the on the Google Drive, and uh, if you want, you can get an access or you can follow along here. Uh, as well as take the data set from there itself and uh, let me know uh, if you find any problem anywhere any anything that uh, you find it difficult to understand and uh, some of the things uh, I have mentioned in my basic tutorial video which I uploaded earlier in part 1 and 2 which is a normal Python video I highly recommend that you see that uh, if you face problem with these operations like specifying the index or specifying the reshape and all of these things because that's what i have explained it over there how you can really do all of these uh, transformation and use it in the algorithm so i highly recommend that you see that and let me know what your feedback is and what your comments are as well as what you would really like to learn more in the future and want to uh, see more from me uh, to improve your learning so that's about it and I will meet you in the new video with a new topic.